Iteration is one of the three main constructs of programming alongside sequence and selection. Iteration is also colloquially known as looping, and it's used whenever you want to repeat one or more lines of code. In this tutorial we'll look at how the for loop functions. What we've got here is the basic syntax of every for next loop. What I'm highlighting is in blue are the visual basic keywords for a for loop. You must include these uh, and in the correct location otherwise your for loop won't work. What I'm highlighting in orange here are the items around the keywords that again your for loop must have. You need a counter variable of some sort. Often uh, we use the counter i, but you could have anything. You could have the word counter if you want. That's just keeping track of how many times the loop has incremented. You need to specify the start position of the loop. Does, it, does the starting value of the counter begin at 0, 5, 20? What is it? You've also got to tell Visual Basic when the loop will end. Will it end after the loop has repeated 10 times or 50 times? And then what we've got incremented, sorry, what we've got indented here are all the lines of code that you want to repeat. Now if we go over here and look at a basic example, we're going to enter a number and then show the times table based on that number when we hit the reply button sorry, the multiply button. We're going to have a variable that stores the number here, 5, that we've entered. Another variable that's going to store the result. But instead of using separate variables for uh, the numbers we want to multiply by, we're going to use a for loop to do that for us. And the advantage here is that our code is much more efficient and we don't have anywhere near as num many lines of code to write uh, compared to if we use separate variables. So if we look at the code, here we've got our two variables that are initialized with a starting value of 0. Notice that, that each of these variables will contain the value 0 every single time the multiply button is clicked. So n is for the user input and then answer is the result of the multiplication. Now n equals text number dot text. That's where we're getting the user input. Then we come to the actual processing of this program, the for loop. We're saying here for i is integer equals 2 to 12. Now notice here I've chosen to declare the counter variable inside the loop, the very first line of the loop in fact. Now that means I can only use this variable i in the loop. I can't use it before the loop begins or after the loop ends, but I don't need to. It's specifically for the loop here. I've specified as well that the starting value of i will be 2 and the finishing value of i will be 12. If we won't run the program again, we can see here it starts at 5, the number that we entered, times 2, our starting value. If I go down here, right down to the bottom, the last time through the counter variable is 12, our endpoint in our for loop. Answer equals i times n, whatever we've typed, times whatever the, the value of the counter variable and then add to the list box this concatenated message 5 times 2 equals 10 5 times 3 equals 15 and so forth and the final thing here after the word next which tells it to push back up to the first line of the for loop we have the counter variable again this is optional, uh, but it's quite useful if you are using nested for loops. And I do this out of habit anyway. It's good programming practice, so we can keep track of which loop we're in.